Where we are physically is a bit different from where this runway show takes us. Physically, we're at the Palais Garnier. It's the Paris Opera House. It's one of the most ornate buildings in Paris. And the only time that I've ever been there personally was to go see Tom Brown shows. He really likes it there. And honestly, if there was an haute couture building in Paris, it would be the Palais Garnier. It is just dripping with gold decoration. Everything about that building is too much in the best way. It makes the Hall of Mirrors look like a public restroom. Anyway, there's this great move that the Tom Brown team does. They, they take the audience of the runway show, the people, and they seat them backstage. Then they open the curtain and we see what is maybe the most consistent Tom Brown theme thousands of Tom Brown clones staring back at the real human audience. To be specific, there were 2,000 of these clones that were seated out in the audience, and this strongly recalls the early Tom Brown world building where the shows consisted of many men in suits showing up to work, or when a bunch of teddy bears were the audience for the Island of Misfit Toys show. This show, however, takes us to an imaginary train station. Two porters carrying luggage start the show off by carrying gray Tom Brown luggage in a variety of sizes. We also know that we're in a train station because the main character, played by model Alec Weck, sits down and checks her wrist for the time while sitting atop her pile of luggage. When she walks into the room, her head is covered in a gray scarf, which blends into her jacket so seamlessly that I first thought that it was a Marcella reference. But anyway, right when she walks in, you hear uh, this recorded cheering. I can't include the actual original track because of YouTube copyright stuff, but it sounds like this. Wow, okay, thanks. thank you everyone. The recorded cheers are pretty funny and they, they happen many times throughout the show, which is funny because of how little fashion people are likely to react at runway shows beyond just clapping a little bit. Good job on Tom for giving himself what he wants. Alec Weck looks at her non-existent watch on her right wrist, and then this pigeon walks out. First off, we are reminded again that it's a train station by the fact that there are small pigeons positioned on the stage and on the seats of some guests. Very accurate to train stations like Grand Central where there are just pigeons indoors everywhere. It's like a damn Home Depot in there. Our pigeon is wearing a stunning feather embroidered turtleneck that does not use actual feathers, but rather silk cotton thread, which is pretty unexpected considering that actual feathers exist and are pretty easy to come by. It's kind of a very Magritte take on this, like this is not a feather. So our protagonist is just killing time, waiting for her train, watching the exaggerations of pigeons move about. And okay, so like as I as I get better at my job, I'm constantly learning things, right? I am I am always met every day with something that I did not know about fashion. I was recently told just flippantly in a conversation by someone that Tom Brown was super inspired by the movie from the 1960s called Playtime. I had never seen this movie before. I watched it and holy shit, this like all of Tom Brown opens up for you when you see this movie. This movie not only speaks to the whole brand, but also this show in particular. The correlation to the brand as a whole is very obvious when you look at the overall dynamic color palette with various shades and tints of gray, right? The whole movie is gray. But more than just color, this movie does embody pretty literally the tone that Tom Brown seems to be striving to achieve with his brand which is like uniformity and how it renders you anonymous, surrealism, kind of a vague sense of the Kafka-esque, but also humor. And it's not like a laugh out loud funny, it's more just like a way of keeping things light and pleasant, just kind of like a charming tone to everything. The movie was made by Jacques Tati, a filmmaker who was all about physical humor and exaggerated movement, mime and subverting the viewer's expectations. Tom's work, taken in as a whole, is obviously exaggerated, like that needs to be explained to no one, particularly in the way that his clothes are presented. The models are instructed to perform some wildly extra bit in every show. Like outside the fact that we can see Jacques Tati's influence on Tom in like the girls running late to this one runway show, the, the dancing cowboy in that same show, which was actually a very, very cute detail about this is that any model on earth would be really freaked out at being asked to do this. Like this is nerve wracking, right? Even if you're like really extra as a person, this would be kind of scary to do in a totally silent like runway audience. 
I was very, very close to the end, like where the photographer pit was during this show. And this poor kid's hands were shaking so hard at the end of the hallway. But he had just done like the impossible. He had walked down this entire runway, just hamming it up and doing a splendid job. But you could tell that his nerves were just like shot by the end of it. He was ready to be done. Okay, so the, the girls running in late to the show, the dancing cowboy is a way that we see Jacques Tati's influence with the exaggeration. Uh, we also have the mayor of the island of misfit toys and all of the goofiness there and now we have this pigeon it's also weirdly like in the clothes right at the very least the whole ethos of tom's clothing resembles that of the uniforms worn in the movie playtime but also when tom's clothing doesn't look like it resembles playtime it's a more exaggerated campy but charming approach it's like it's simultaneously dead serious but also very whimsical and silly like can you think of another brand that can pull off not do but pull off lobster claws for hands or or presenting a giraffe as like the opener to their runway show and it still be a brand that you take very very seriously i can't and while we generally associate Tom and his brand with the color gray, we know that Tom does use a lot of color, but it's in unexpected ways. Like it's very reminiscent of this movie in particular, which does feature color outside of just gray. Gray is just helping set the stage for the rest of the movie's elements. Tom's clothes are like that too, and they subvert your expectations when you initially tune into a show where you start with all gray looks and then the show blooms and takes on a life of its own. Playtime is also an entirely visual film. Like, it's the only movie I've ever seen where dialogue truly does not matter. The cinematography positions the viewer in such a way that the movie just becomes about people watching, which is every fashion person's favorite thing. We love people watching. Tati seems to be creating humor in a very unique way here. The manner in which the viewer is watching these characters as they interact in this very stylized world, observing their mannerisms and relationships closely leads to the best humor. You learn a lot about these people. Maybe this Tom Brown show is really just the way that our seated model perceives the people walking around her, her environment while she's just waiting for her train to depart. Let me level with you real quick. Listen, I know what this is. I know that you watch all these videos and that you keep thinking like, oh, it would be cool to see what kind of exclusive content he has. Oh, it would be cool to be on that Discord server. But you keep forgetting to actually sign up out of laziness. Stop being lazy. You're disappointing me. Can we whiten my teeth if we like zoom in really hard? Just change the coloration a little bit so that we kind of like get a little bit more white in there. I feel like it's more impactful if like we're like real close, but I like my, you know, Teeth are kind of fucked up. Sign up for the Patreon so I can afford dental whitening strips. There are 12 of these bell carriage looks. These looks all feature cloche hats. Cloche is the French word for bell. And it's a pretty good description for this hat in particular as the cloche hat even has a loop on the top like a literal actual bell. But the cheekiness does not end there. Bell sleeves, bell shoes. Beautiful. That was a French joke. Like bell. <laughs> Come on guys, I'm not a rapper. <laughs> There's also a massive bell that's hung from the ceiling of this show and these bell looks come systematically throughout the runway and it's maybe meant to say that each time that you see a bell carriage look, it's meant to signify that another hour has passed for our waiting protagonist. Except instead of hearing a bell toll to indicate that, you're met with the visual embodiment of a bell sound. And the people that come between those bell looks, those are all meant to be the other passengers for this train that she's waiting on. So she's just sitting on her luggage, thinking, and people watching. The bell looks are also really striking. I, I couldn't actually tell what they were exactly when I first saw them. Okay, so I'm just gonna clear this up for you real quick. Bell shape, Tom Brown suit. Bell shape, Tom Brown suit. We got it? So it's a, it's a Tom Brown suit inside of a, of a bell shape. And most of the time, Trump Loy pieces are just literally print. Usually they're screen printed on. It's just something that appears to be on the front that isn't actually on the front. Here, it's sort of a Trump Loy in that like, I don't think that suit is something that you could like take off or like remove in separate pieces, but they are whole pieces of cloth that are shaped onto the front of this bell suit, which I assume you enter in from the back. Trump Loy as a motif is often used to set a surreal tone by designers, yet this is less in the original tradition of Trompe l'oeil as much as it is looking at a Tom Brown suit through like a funhouse mirror. It has all the layers of fabric there too. 
This really reminds me of Combs Fall 2012 2D collection, except it's weirdly, uh, like, it's like more 3D. Which is sort of not trompe l'oeil, but also is. Until you realize it's literally a gown. I think this is Tom's way of saying like, well, yeah, I'm doing couture, but like, I'm not gonna not do suits. <laughs> but it does honor the medium and the tradition and the, the French-ness. Like, despite the fact that these are suiting looks, the pearls at the hem and at the end of the sleeves of the bell carriage looks that it still seems to be luxuriating in its couture-ness. Tom Brown, here in particular in this show, seems to be discussing the relationship between his inherently American design philosophy and his relationship with the French fashion scene. Cloche hats are a great way of kind of blending those two things together when you consider that cloche hats were enormously popular in 20th century America and 20th century France. So let's talk about some of these other looks. We know that Tom grew up in Pennsylvania and his look is heavily inspired, you'll never guess, it's heavily inspired by East Coast American prep. Tom Brown is an American, obviously, right? Okay, so I'm an American too. I don't wanna shit talk my home and I, I love this show. This Tom Brown show was great. I don't think there's any confusion about that. Americans are not typically known for having the sensibilities that produce great couture. It's honestly kind of the opposite, right? Like. Calvin Klein, Ralph Lauren, like all of the great American designers, they're just known for being people who made massive businesses that make a bunch of money. That's honestly not fair, Bliss. We have Oscar de la Renta and Ralph's biggest contribution was mythologizing the aesthetic of normal American life. Oscar de la Renta is a Dominican man and your point about Ralph is like saying that Steve Jobs' greatest contribution was popularizing turtlenecks. That's just not true. My point is just that Americans are not known for their contributions to the old world arts. We don't tend to like making things by hand, we don't like fussy, luxurious materials, and we don't like elegant classical depictions of beauty. My guess is that that's because none of those things were really a part of our cultural history. We're a fairly new country, at least compared to France, we're a new country. But when we do contribute to the old world arts, we tend to try to revolutionize them. Like, think about a rap or jazz or like Basquiat or Moby Dick. We tend to, Americans like to fuck things up if they're gonna contribute to them. Okay, so here we have an American, Tom Brown, who is coming in to one of the most high tradition old world art forms, haute couture. Okay, so this is the, the centerpiece of the video. If you have fallen asleep because of my beautiful baritone voice, I need you to wake up now and pay attention. Tom Brown is showing a show here that is worthy of the name of couture, of the tradition of couture in Paris, but he is keeping all of the things that make him an American designer. The conflict between those two cultures, those two sides of what Tom Brown is, that conflict is what makes this show interesting. Because, I mean, yeah, this stuff is absolutely worthy of the couture title. I honestly really wish that Tom Brown would invest more in trying to educate the public on what all he's doing specifically in these looks, because every time you get him started saying something like this. One of the fabrics that I use really often, of course, it's gray, it's in a wool crepe, but the idea of gold bullion being used in a radial stitch all over the coat really elevates it to this collection. He then gets off it really quickly, like we're not interested in it, and then starts saying something like this. I'm gonna go back to the hotel, gonna have some champagne with Andrew and dinner in the room. And then I'm over here like spitting out food, being like, wait, wait, that's adorable, but please talk about the clothes more. Yeah, obviously there's a great ode to one of OG Elsa Scaparelli's most iconic designs in there, which you would know more about if you watched my massive breakdown of Scaparelli under Daniel Roseberry. It's an incredible video, you should watch it. In that same interview with Vogue, Tom briefly discusses something else that shows this great tension between his Americanness and the coutureness of France. It's a certain textile common for Tom, seersucker. For those not aware, seersucker is a type of weave, right? Like with all textiles, we're supposed to ask, what is it made of and how is it made? So what is it made of? This is made of wool. How is it made? This is a seersucker. The fabric is mostly used in super hot climates and it always has this distinct pucker in it if you, if you zoom in really close. A common nickname for seersucker is railroad stripe and you know, it's not like a triple entendre or anything like crazy in the literary world, but railroad stripe, lady waiting at a train station, it's a, it's a pretty excellent tie-in, an excellent railroad tie-in. Okay, so the show is, it's almost over. The porters move our protagonist back to await the arrival of the train, which 
does indeed arrive as a headpiece, followed by the coolest looking conductor ever and ending with a bridal look, the last look of many Paris couture shows. Tom is bringing his sensibilities into this couture staple by presenting a beautifully tailored dress as a bridal option. The dress is sheer enough to where you can even see the shoulder and hip padding used to create the gown. Shoulder for tailoring, hip pads for couture. These dichotomies are blended together seamlessly in this show between America and France. Pigeons as a symbol of a large city, something that Paris and New York have in common. There are even gargoyles that are featured in the architecture of both Paris and New York. We have the cloche hat that was popular in both the US and France in the 1920s. Tom's career has been really interesting to watch. I mean, he's definitely an American and that Americanness seeps into everything he does. I mean, the man has put a poodle skirt on the runway. He is extremely American. But Paris seems to welcome Tom in, which is pretty touching considering the rivalry that exists between France and America. But it seems like Tom is using the global stage to say that American influence in design can be meaningfully compelling. That in America's weird history that lacks a profound appreciation for beauty, there is still beauty to be found. Love you guys. Peace.